Aguirre has long called for the settlement to be scrapped because of how the terms of the deal were hatched in secret overseas. I caught up with him last week at the shuttered San Onofre plant. He says San Onofre's fate was doomed even before the defective equipment was installed. So you have said that this process was flawed from the start before the flawed steam generators were installed at San Onofre. How so? Well, the, the Public Utilities Commission allowed uh, Edison to charge for the steam generators without a safety license. Uh, even when modeling showed that there were defects in the steam generators that were being used and uh, without getting uh, a careful reasonableness review uh, by the CPUC, which is the normal uh, way in which uh, big capital projects like this were supposed to be approved. Less than a year after the equipment was installed, it sprung a radioactive leak and the plant was shut down. Eventually, state regulators approved a settlement agreement that stuck ratepayers with a $3.3 billion bill. Later, it was revealed to the public that that settlement agreement nearly matched an outline that had been penned by a Southern California Edison executive and state regulators during a secret meeting in Poland. But it took regulators a full year before they decided to reopen the settlement. Why do you think it took so long? They haven't really reopened the case. Uh, what they've done is, under a lot of pressure from the media and from the courts, they've given the appearance of reopening it, but there's no investigation. People are still paying the full uh, amount of uh, costs of uh, the San Onofre plant, but they're not getting electricity. So uh, it took so long because they were trying to figure out uh, how to come up with a, a PR ploy uh, and that's what they've come forward with. So now state regulators have ordered Edison and minority owner SDG&E to meet with consumer groups who opposed the deal. Edison says it believes that settlement agreement is entirely appropriate, but it and SDG&E say that they will honor the state regulatory order and meet with these consumer groups. What do you think would be a fair settlement for customers? A full-scale investigation like in every other case that involves billions of dollars like this that you're asking ratepayers to pay. The ratepayers have an absolute right to understand how these steam generators failed 11 months into their 40-year lifespan, something that never has happened in the nuclear industry before. Uh, they also have a right now, because of all the cover-up and all these secret meetings, they have a right to get to the bottom of it. And then out of an investigation will come a fair resolution. Against this backdrop, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has granted you a hearing on your push to have that settlement agreement overturned. But given that state regulators have actually reopened settlement discussions, does that not make this issue now moot before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals? What our Ninth Circuit case does, the federal case does, is it seeks to move uh, the proceeding from the PUC to the United States District Court in San Diego where we'll have a full opportunity to take, uh, in, uh, investigate, uh, take evidence, gather evidence, uh, issue subpoenas, and get to the bottom of it, which is something that will never happen in front of the CPUC. What will your arguments be before the Ninth Circuit? Under the law that we have been denied and are being denied a fair hearing before being required to pay for the San Onofre plant to produce electricity that it's not producing, our clients are having to pay those costs for over a decade. If that's going to be the case, at least they should have their day in court and find out if that's a fair resolution. How common is it for a federal appeals court to hear an appeal of how state regulators have handled an issue? It's not terribly common for federal courts to review the actions of an administrative agency. And in fact, there's a federal law that prohibits it, except in very limited circumstances in which the parties at, to the administrative proceeding, the, the public, have been denied a fair hearing, and this fits into that exception. Finally, 3.8 million pounds of nuclear waste from San Onofre will be stored in concrete encased steel canisters behind a 27-foot high seawall at San Onofre until a permanent nuclear waste storage site can be found. You're against this plan. Why? Because it will be buried under the sand. The, it will seep. Uh, Right now, there are other options that are more desirable. For example, the Palo Verde nuclear uh, installation, uh, which is in the Mojave Desert. Uh, there is no reason uh, to suggest that putting 3.8 million pounds of high-level nuclear waste is consistent with the Coastal Act. It's, it's ludicrous, it's absurd, and it has to be stopped. 
Thank you, Mike, for speaking to me today. And thank you.